Hey y'all, welcome back to Dots and Beyond. I'm Beth. It has been a long time since we checked in on the reading journal and our grim reading challenge for the year, so let's go ahead and get caught up. Here are the books that I was reading in February. Yes, it has been that long. I came into February reading the fifth novel in the Legends of the First Empire series by Michael J. Sullivan. It continues our quest structure as our band of misfits, or our fellowship, continues in pursuit of saving the mystic Suri, and the story for me is losing steep. After so much time in this world, maybe the shine is wearing off because I struggle to stay engaged. It's another middle book doing middle book things. The story moves forward. Many obstacles are in the way of the fellowship, etc., etc. Age of Death ends with yet another cliffhanger. And as you can see, I wrote down one, one quote that actually stood out to me, which was all the truly valuable lessons leave a scar. I rated it three and a half stars out of five and on to the final chapter, which is Age of Empire. Age of Empire is the sixth and final novel in the Legends of the First Empire series, and it begins with pissing me right the hell off as one character is forced to come face to face with prior trauma and abuse in their single most vulnerable moment. There's a reason. It involves forgiveness and redemption, but it is not, in my opinion, a good enough reason. Sullivan could have approached the nothingness our characters find themselves in in a myriad of ways without this element. Despite its unfortunate beginning, Age of Empire mostly sticks the landing for a six-book series. Nothing is too terribly surprising, even what is supposed to be the most shocking death, but in his usual fashion, Sullivan reveals just a bit more and leaves just enough of an open ending that he can return and fill in the gaps if he so chooses. Four out of five stars to wrap up the series. And then we had a book that I had to add to my DNF list, and I did not create a page for it because I didn't want to waste the space. So that book is The Bookshop of Yesterdays by Amy Meyerson. Y'all, I've had this book since it came out in 2018. I bought it new, and it's been on my shelves. It's literary fiction. The novel follows Miranda, who becomes estranged from her favorite uncle, due to her mom and her mom's brother's relationship. He's the uncle. The uncle owned a bookshop, and when he dies, he leaves it to Miranda. She no longer lives near the city. She has her own life, though it is a highly dysfunctional one, and she jaunts back to California to go see this bookstore. Miranda, my friends, is a horrible person. She's horrible to her boyfriend. He's horrible to her. Their relationship is juvenile and jealous and irritating. Miranda has no respect for her mother or her father and makes demands on them regarding the disillusion of the relationship years ago. They owe her no explanation, and even if they were willing to share, her request for this information is made through trickery and deceit or blatant forcefulness. She has no empathy and no tact. She becomes so disgruntled with her parents that she decides she can no longer stay with them while in California. There is a manager of the bookstore with whom I'm sure she bails on said current dysfunctional boyfriend and immediately starts a new relationship, blah, blah, blah. I made it about 40% through the book. Every flag is one instance of Miranda being a horrible person. And I was done. I'll be packing this off in a donation box I've had in a corner gathering small things post move. Not even gonna rate it. We just DNF'd it and we're gonna make it go away. After that, I decided to jump to one of my most anticipated releases of the year, which was Book of Doors. If you've been here for a minute, then you know I love Portal Fantasy, and I am a big fan of Doors. In a great reading year last year, The 10,000 Doors of January was my favorite and is my planner theme for 2024. I like Doors. The Book of Doors follows Cassie, a bookseller living in New York City with her best friend Izzy. Cassie's life radically changes when a customer dies in the cafe of her store and leaves behind a book specifically for her called The Book of Doors. This novel is a mess. And as one other reviewer wrote, this could have been a five-star read if it hadn't been written by a man. Gareth Brown needs a master class or two or three in both character development and leaving a little to the imagination. First, he cannot and should not be allowed to write female characters. Our heroine routinely diminishes her own body, and almost every conversation between two women turns into a diatribe on what they can and cannot eat without it going straight to their hips. 
This is introduced early and is a complete turnoff, but I kept going. It turns out that the Book of Doors is, of course, not alone. It's part of a collection of mystical books, each imbued with some sort of power. Too many books, too quickly. And don't get me started on the Hail Mary, completely implausible way in which these books became special. There is no intrigue. Everything is broadcast miles ahead of any reveal, and I wish I had DNF'd it because despite its title and marketing, this is not the book for me. 2.5 out of 5 stars. And I was very sad because it was highly anticipated. And that wrapped up February. I actually came into March reading Book of Doors, but I think I finished it on the first or the second. So I went ahead and put it in with my February reads instead of my March reads. Now, our February grim reading story was The Wedding of Mrs. Fox. I have exchanged a couple of comments with those of you on YouTube who took the time to read this out of the way story that most of us don't know in the grim fairy tale pantheon. We're alternating between. We did Sleeping Beauty in January. We did a lesser known one in February. For March, we did Snow White. I did put this on my community tab in case you missed it. There is a link there where you can go and read it for yourself if you would like to do that. Snow White was our grim story. I'm gonna talk about it just a little bit, but in the midst of my own research, I stumbled across this book by Maria Tatar, T-A-T-A-R, titled The Fairest of Them All, 21 Tales of Mothers and Daughters. And most of them are some spin on the Snow White mythology, even from Asia and Africa, where the stories are so similar and yet have their own cultural take on them, but the themes are the same. That's where I'm curious about it, and I'd almost like to read it if I have the time for it. In Snow White, we have some themes that the Grimm brothers and most folk tales of the day were known for. Number three is always a mystical thing. You have three drops of blood. There's three queens. There's three plans for the evil queen to murder Snow White. The dwarves mourn her for three days. Three. It's a magic number, as School House Rock used to say. In this one, the dwarves have no names. Disney was not the first to name the dwarves. There's another something out there where they're all in an ick, like flick and pick and pick. And <laughs> I don't know. I'd have to look it back up. The description of Snow White is interesting because in this story, it is white as snow, red as blood, and black as wood on this window frame. The story does not dictate that her skin is white, her lips are red, and her hair is black. Disney did that. So you could really take this description of Snow White in many different directions. And then just the normal fairy tales gave villagers a way to talk about things like morals or learning or even taboo subjects in the realm of telling these stories and then having discussions about them. And so a mother-daughter relationship, healthy or unhealthy, would have been a very compelling topic for the mothers and daughters of the time. What else did I read? I finally picked up The Stardust Thief by Chelsea Abdullah. I think this was the first book of the month book that I got. I think that's the month that I jumped on board. I've really been looking forward to this one. And again, it was one that didn't disappoint quite as much as Book of Doors did, but I didn't love it as much as I thought I was going to love it. Both of them are debuts. Maybe that says something about what I prefer to read, although I've read some really, really phenomenal debuts. I really thought, again, that this would be a five-star read for me. This is the first book in the Sand Sea trilogy. It introduces us to the Midnight Merchant. Her name is Luli Al-Nazari, a criminal who hunts and sells illegal magic with the help of her jinn bodyguard, Kadir. In this world, the jinn and the humans are mostly at war, so this relationship between Luli and Kadir is different. It's a quest fantasy. Love a quest fantasy. Featuring Luli a prince, and a royal guard. It is also a story of stories. I think we've determined I like stories of stories, and I like stories about bookstores, and I like stories about words, and I like stories about doors. Being a story of stories, The Stardust Thief does drop very heavily from 1001 Nights, though it's not a complete retelling. I love this world, and I love the magic system, but the story lost its magic as it progressed, Partially because our very adult characters often come across as young adult in their conversations and reactions. 
though I have the highest praise for an Arab desert fantasy from a female Arab author, but the character building suffered in favor of the vibes. Hopefully, Abdullah has learned a few things along the way, and the follow-up in this proposed trilogy will be stronger. The jury is still out on if I will read it or not. 3.5 out of 5 stars. It's fine. Needing a win, I grabbed the follow-up to one of my favorite novels of 2023, The Boy on the Bridge. This is a prequel to The Girl with All the Gifts, which I rated 5 stars. Despite its prequel status, they absolutely need to be read in a publishing order. Read The Girl with All the Gifts first, and then read The Boy on the Bridge. Like The Girl with All the Gifts, I have refrained from putting in my thoughts before filming this as I believe this duology needs to be read blind, without exposure to too many reviews, or reading a heavy synopsis. This one is not quite the home run as its predecessor, but it is still a great read. It has great cast representation in race, sexuality, and mental health. Much of the cast does gang up on another character for no other reason than he is different, which is just a little bit irksome. Some criticisms I have read is that this book reads very much like the first. This is an inevitability in the dystopian future in which it's set, but the writing is so stunning that it doesn't bother me. I picked up the audiobook this time because it was in the Audible free catalog, and the narration is stunning. Four out of five stars. And that brings us to setting up for April, right? April. Yeah. So I'm going to washi tape this page like I have done all of these others. I am going with this one because it matches the set and because I can't find any of my other wide washi tape. I'm completely at a loss as to where my wide washi tapes are. I have one that has just script on it that I was planning to use for this page. I don't know where it is. I can't find it. And at this point, I'm not sure which box it would even be in. That's the dilemma that I'm dealing with here. I have two walk-in closets in this apartment. Yes, it's, it's lovely. But one of them has like the Christmas stuff and... I think maybe, just perhaps, it has gotten tucked away in that closet somehow. And I'm going to have to go digging to see if I can find it. It's the only thing that I can think of is that that's where it would be at this point. And I don't know if there's a box behind what I can see. I just don't have an answer. <laughs> terribly frustrating at this point because I thought I had everything out. Now my thinner washi tapes, you know, this or thinner, are actually in a light box that I had some of my filming lights in and I've ordered a piece of furniture to store it in. I mentioned that in my plan with me this month and it has been delayed multiple times now by Amazon, which has only happened to me once, maybe two other times. And in my experience, once that happens, once it's delayed once and then twice and then three times, it's never gonna come. And you just have to report that it's never come and order another one. So I still don't have my washi tape organized where I can, oh, I just cut part of the page. That's okay. I don't even have it organized where I can find it all, get to it all. I like to try to at least semi-sort it by color because that's typically how I go looking for washi tape is a specific color to match a specific thing. Anyway, that's just where we are. I am going to trim this other side. What I have not decided, like I did decide that I wasn't going to create a page for a page like this for books that I DNF because I just don't feel like I need to. I will eventually get it recorded in Goodreads and maybe make some notes there as to why it was DNF'd as opposed to putting it in my journal when I'm already going to be short on pages coming towards the end of the year. Like I know that. I know that this is going to be one of those things that I get really tight on. Oh, the other thing that's missing are my tabs. I don't know where they are either. They should have been tucked back here but they're not like this is the stencil that I used for my five star rating this stencil stays in this journal the tabs should have stayed in this journal and they did not they did not stay here there is the cover page for April and here is my artwork this is like a Tudor cottage and it's got a donkey on top of the donkey is a dog on top of the dog is a cat and on top of the cat is a rooster and they represent a story titled The Bremen Town Musicians by the Grimm Brothers. 
Again, one that we don't read or are not all that familiar with. I'm also out of matte sticker paper, and so we're gonna use the tape roller to glue this in. I just printed it on regular paper. But yes, the Bremen Town Musicians. Folk tales, especially European folk tales, are famous for giving animals human characteristics. And there are, in fact, more, I think, of the grim fairy tales that have animals as the central focus than people. So you can see why the ones that we know are the ones that have people. <laughs> Those are the ones that we relate to, and that's why we have so many adaptations of Snow White and Sleeping Beauty and all of those tales. There's that. I've grabbed a green to kind of use as my color because it matches the green in here. I didn't want to do another pink. And I don't know if you noticed, but between March or February and March, I've done away with the calendar. I just don't want to, I don't want to draw it. Don't want to deal with it. It just wasn't working for me, so we made it go away. And it's okay for you to start one thing in your journal and then decide that it's not working for you and you don't want to deal with it. Let's see if I have a sort of more olivey colored green dot marker. Ta-da! I found one. This one's a shuttle art, so it's not a zig clean color. It's going to be closest, I think, to this. And we'll just list what I am at reading. Then we'll make some notes on Bremen Town musicians. I can tell you that when I was originally researching this grim fairy tale idea, I actually read this story out loud to both of my sons, my grown sons, who both happened to be here at the time. We had lots of WTF moments and are you kidding me moments and <laughs> we had a good time with it as a family. All right, what am I reading? I am currently reading Building a Second Brain by Tiago Forte. I am a fan of Tiago's. I follow his YouTube channel. I actually I get his newsletter. I've never actually read Building a Second Brain, which is about organizing your digital life so that we can remember the amount of things that are input to us in this digital age because we're taking in five to ten times more of information on a daily basis than we were before the digital age. And it is the book club pick for Bujo Yu for bulletjournal.com. And so that's what we are reading. I've made it, I don't know, where am I? I'm on page 25. I started it today, which is April 2nd. The audiobook that I have going right now is Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir, because I'm feeling some science fiction. And I had heard that the audiobook was phenomenal. And so I started it right on the first, I think. And so far, it is, narration is fantastic. And of course, it's a book with a singular character, much like The Martian was, which was also by Andy Weir. And y'all, I have picked back up The Long Way to a Small Angry Pen. Hopefully, I'll finish it in the next day or two by Becky Chambers. It is in my purse. It's my lunch book when I'm at work in the office and I'm only in the office three days a week. And then sometimes my lunch gets hijacked. And I came into the year reading it. So we've picked, we've picked it back up. We're going to get it finished to a small, angry planet. Like I said, I'm feeling some science fiction. My handwriting today is a hot mess. Let's not look at that at all. I have also not been making my little gilded headers. I will probably catch up and then make them for the rest of the year so that I have them on hand and go back and stick them in retroactively for March as well as April. Hopefully before we get to May, I'll find my wide washi tape. Maybe I'll order some wider washi tape so that I can wallpaper these pages in some different styles than what we have going here. So do you want to know what the first lines of the books that I've been reading are? Let's look. I don't have my current ones in, but the ones that I have finished are in here. So this year I decided to put my first lines in a dedicated journal that I can keep from year to year to year until it runs out and then I'll create another first lines journal. Age of Death was, oh dear Mari, what have I done? Bryn's thought came too late. Age of Empire, in the eternal silence and absolute darkness of the abyss's unimaginable depth, Ivor heard a scream. Bookshop of Yesterday's, which I wish I hadn't written in here. The last time I saw my uncle, he bought me a dog. 
and then Book of Doors in Kellner Books on the Upper East Side of New York City, a few minutes before his death, John Weber was reading The Count of Monte Cristo. Stardust Thief? When Luli El Nazari was told by the one-eyed merchant to meet on a small and humble dow, she expected, quite reasonably, a small and humble dow. It turned out to be not so small, nor humble. The boy on the bridge, the bucks have all been passed, and the arguments thrashed out until they don't even bleed anymore. Those are my first lines for February and March. And you can see my reading pace has been slow, which is expected with everything that we had going on and moving and books being packed up and trying to unpack and not having time to read and all of those sorts of things. Our story, add this to our 12 stories card. So the Bremen Town Musicians, if I can fit it on there, stick that back in its pocket. Here is my index. I have finished the Legends of the First Empire series, so we won't have any more ages <laughs> for the index. Under A, three books under B, Bookshop of Yesterday's. I just put DNF so I know it's on my DNF page. Book of Doors, Boy on the Bridge. Let's see, The Grief Tower, which I read in January, I think. I don't have anything from I through P or Q. Red Rising, January's added Stardust Thief for an S. And then that's it for now, I think. So, still working on my goals. I have read one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Again, I was way ahead in 2023 with that. I have not added Bookshop of Yesterday's to this as a book that I read. If I made it 40% through the book, do you think I should mark it in books read? Let me know down in the comments below. Weigh in. Let me know what you think I should do with this page if I have DNF'd a book. Now, last year I DNF'd a book in 10 pages. There was a book titled Rock Chick that just rubbed me all the wrong way in the first 10 pages. I would never have counted it on this list, but let me know if I should color that in for Bookshop of Yesterday's. I haven't read a single classic, by the way, or a memoir. Memoir should change in April. There's a Judy Dench book coming out I'm very much looking forward to. Classics, we'll just, we'll see when we get there. So this is my backlist, and Bookshop of Yesterday's has been on this list, so my bubble... It's filled in because I finally started it. <laughs> we didn't read it, but we definitely got part way through. Oh, and Stardust Thief. Hang on. Let me fill that in. So there's two from my backlist. Two of ten in January through March, which is not too bad. I think maybe we can maybe we can do that. At Lies of a Jungo is a novella, so I should definitely be able to read that at this point. That is caught up. Series, I don't know if I'm gonna put the Stardust Thief series on here. I did take the time while I was packing to inventory all of my books and I updated my series tracker in Notion and it's far more detailed than this. Let me know if you're interested in ever seeing that. My Realm of the Elderlings is still here. This is not a challenge or a read along. This is just me keeping track of which series are in which order, so that when I do read them, I can fill them in. The only one I've read is Assassin's Apprentice. I loved it. Why I haven't picked up Royal Assassin is beyond me. Book Hall. Book of Doors. I have purchased Map of the Other Lands, even though I have not finished Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies yet. And then Building Second of Brain by Tiago Forte. You saw that I have purchased that as well. Have I added anything to my release radar? I did. What did I add? Truth of the Eleke, which I haven't looked at yet. Should have come out in March. Graveyard Shift, ML Rio. So I loved If We Were Villains. It was one of my favorite books of last year because I'm a Shakespeare bitch and it's very pretentious and Shakespearean. Graveyard Shift, it's a novella as well. DNF, Bookshop of Yesterday's, and then I also DNF The Happiness Trap, which was the book club pick for Bullet Journal University. And I think I just was in such a bad place. It was just a, a rough three months for me to try to read a book called The Happiness Trap. So it's a soft DNF because I have it, I might pick it back up. And then I'm way behind on my Grim Watch. I have watched three episodes of my Grim Watch. I should be almost done 
with season two. I should be at least up to episode 15 of season two by now if I was keeping track. And the guilty party here is that I started that Stargate binge and I've been all the way through regular Stargate and I've been all the way through Stargate Atlantis and I am part way through <laughs> Stargate Universe. It's, it's a problem. I realize I'll catch up. You watch because then the grim binge will start and it'll just. I tend to watch TV when I'm doing things like doing the drawing and sketching in my son's bullet journal to do his designs and whatnot. Or if I'm just doing busy work on my work from home days, if I'm knee deep in a spreadsheet and that kind of thing, that's when I have TV on in the background. Haven't put any five star faves in here yet. Uh, this is just my rating system. Recommendations. I've decided I want to read The Will of the Many because everybody seems to be talking about it. So I want to see if I want to do that. Book of the Month is a little different because I, this month, have switched myself over to audio. And when some of the books for Book of the Month are not available on audio, they give you other choices on audio that you can pick instead of them. I was going to skip April because I didn't like any of the physical book choices anyway, but I did just go ahead and get a short walk through a wide world. Is that what that says? Yeah, a short walk through a wide world. I already had four credits because of switching over to audio, so I've picked up a couple of other audiobooks as well, and we'll see if I get to those. And then we jump into January, and that catches us all the way up. From February through March, thank you again for your patience as the world has been crazy and we are now getting caught back up. If you're doing the Grimm read-along, once you read the Town Musicians, come tell me about it in the comments. Let's have a conversation. I am going to reread it, even though I have read it partway through on my own and then I immediately stopped and read it through aloud to my sons. If you're going to read The Town Musicians, let's chat about it in the comments once you've read it. If you like this video, y'all know what to do. You got to give me a big thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I will catch you in the next one.